back. My name is Dawn and this is Living a Word-Filled Life. And today we are discussing the fact that prosperity is God's will for us. I know that's a bad word. Prosperity is a bad word for some people. Um, but today, the case I present to you is that God wants you to be prosperous. So um, there's so many layers to this. But this first week, that's what we're going to talk about. And it's just funny because there's so, it's not funny, it's kind of sad, that so many people are in lack and in poverty and living paycheck to paycheck and, and, and not having enough. And that's set up by the enemy. The enemy loves that. And what the enemy has done, as he's twisted the word, the word, the word around to where people think that it's good to be poor. They think it's it's humble. You're humble and you know, no God, I don't I don't need to. I just need enough to get by. I just need my needs met and that's all I need. That's all I need. But you know what? Actually what that is, that is pride in the opposite direction. And and it's it's also selfish. And you're probably thinking, how in the world is that selfish? Well, it's selfish because you should want more, not for you to have more, but you know, for you to have your needs met, yes, but you're able to help more people. With, there's always gonna be people in need, always. And the more you have, the more you're able to help those who don't have. And that's what prosperity is about. It's not about you getting so much that you just live in this big fancy mansion and lock your doors and you don't ever do anything with it. That's not it at all. God's not opposed to mansions, but he is opposed to people hoarding their money and not helping others. So we're gonna start <laughs> with the first scripture um, today and it's very similar to what you have heard before. Let me explain. How many of you have heard money is the root of all evil? That's, I've heard it since I was a kid. I've, I've, you hear it today. Oh, and I see posts on Facebook. Oh, money is the root of all evil. That is not what the Bible says. And what it is, is the enemy just twisted it just a little bit, tweaked it a little bit, to make it to where that's what he has everybody thinking because that's what the Bible says. That's not what the Bible says. Let me show you what the Bible says and that is in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 6, verse 10 and this is from the NIV version. It says, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. So what that is saying is not money is the root of evil, but the love of money. When you're putting money above God, you're putting money above people, you're, putting mo you're making money your God, that is evil. But money is not evil. So when somebody says, oh, money is the root of all evil, no, no, no. Money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. Um, okay, we have another famous <laughs> scripture when talking about prosperity that the enemy has twisted this one too. And remember when Jesus met with the rich young ruler and he said, sell everything you have and give it to the poor. Okay, so how did the enemy twist that? Well, we shouldn't have things. Jesus told the rich young ruler to sell everything and, and give it to the poor. He, God wants you to not have things. He wants you to give it away and just be poor and be humble. That is not what it says. And that's not the meaning behind what Jesus told him. Okay, so we're going to read this and we're going to read it in its true context. And we're going to read it from the Passion Translation. And this is Mark chapter 10 verses 17 through 31 and the title of it is a rich man meets jesus that's the title in the passion translation 
As Jesus started on his way, a man came running up to him. Kneeling down in front of him, he cried out, Good teacher, what one thing am I required to do to gain eternal life? Jesus responded, Why do you call me good? Only God is truly good. You already know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give a false testimony. Do not cheat. And honor your father and mother. The man said to Jesus, Teacher, I have carefully obeyed these laws since my youth. Jesus fixed his gaze upon the man with tender love and said to him, Yet there is still one thing in you lacking. Go sell all that you have and give the money to the poor. Then all of your treasure will be in heaven. After you've done this, come back and walk with me. Completely shocked by Jesus' answer, he turned and walked away very sad, for he was extremely rich. Jesus looked at the faces of his disciples and said, How hard it is for the wealthy to enter into God's kingdom realm. The disciples were startled when they heard this. But Jesus again said to them, Children, it is next to impossible for those who trust in their riches to find their way into God's kingdom realm. It is easier to stuff a rope through the eye of a needle than for a wealthy person to enter into the kingdom realm. But this left them all the more astonished as they whispered to one another, then who could ever be saved? Jesus looked at them and replied, with people, it is impossible. But with God, God makes all things possible. Then Peter spoke up and said, can't you see what we've left? everything that we had to cling to you? Listen to my words, Jesus said. Anyone who leaves his home behind and chooses me over children, parents, family, and possessions, all for the sake of the gospel, it will come back to him a hundred times as much in this lifetime. Homes, family, mothers, brothers, sisters, children, possessions, along with persecutions. And in the age to come, he will inherit eternal life. But many who, are many who are considered to be the most important now will be the least important then. And many who are viewed as the least important now will be considered the most important then. So what happened here? Jesus knew that this guy valued money. He was a rich young ruler. And, but this, this guy loved Jesus. He loved, he loved God. And he did everything he was supposed to do. He followed the commandments. He loved God. He, he was doing all the things. But what you need to realize, Jesus was asking him to be an apostle. He said, sell what you have. Just leave that and come and follow me. But he was not willing to give it up. But if you keep reading, that's not, Jesus didn't say, just come sell all your stuff and give it to the poor and be poor and sad. That's where people stop with the story. But that's not the whole story. The rest of the story is that Jesus said, come and follow me. And he wanted him to follow him as an apostle, like the other apostles. But what's interesting is the apostles were getting all in a tizzy because they're like, you know, if how are we supposed to get into heaven if people with money can't get into heaven? So they were a little bit upset about this. And the reason they were upset about this is because they weren't poor. They were not poor. We had, um, let's see, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. They came from a fishing business. We had uh, Matthew, who was a tax collector. And those were among the wealthiest people at the time, um, back in that day. Because remember, we talked about this a while back, the tax collectors could not only collect taxes, but they would get to keep a portion. Thank God the IRS does do that now, as far as we know, who knows. Um, the other one is um, Luke, and he was a physician. So these guys had money. And think about it too, Judas was the treasurer of the group. Poor people don't need a treasurer to follow them around. 
So, so many people have in their head because that's how the enemy twisted God's word that Jesus was poor, his apostles are poor, this rich young ruler came and Jesus is like, oh, sell all your stuff so you can be poor like us. That is not what happened. And so, this guy, this young ruler, had the opportunity of a lifetime and he passed it up because he trusted. He loved the money. He loved Jesus but he picked, he got to choose, and he loved the money more. But what's interesting, if you keep reading about that, is Jesus said that it will come back to him a hundred times much in this lifetime. So those who left for Jesus' sake, and still today, those who leave for the sake of the gospel, God's word says you will be rewarded a hundred times over. What you give up, you will be rewarded times a hundred. Times a hundred. And it's not when you get to heaven either. A lot of people say, oh, but that's when you get to heaven. No, it says a hundred times as much in this lifetime. This lifetime down here on earth. So if the ruler would have sold all his possessions, given them to the poor, followed Jesus, he could have become an apostle of Jesus, and then through the process of that, he would have been rewarded and he would end up with a hundred times more than he gave away. That is the true story of the rich young ruler. So yes, Jesus wants us to help people, but no, he does not want you to be poor. That's a lie from Satan, and, and that, that lie's been going on for much too long. And, and people need to stop and, and not just take a version of what the Bible, like a, a, a snippet, I should say, of what the Bible says. You need to read the whole thing and see how it's used. So money is not evil, and Jesus does not want you to sell everything and be poor and be miserable. So that's where we are right now. So we're gonna look at some more scriptures. Let's look at 3 John um, chapter 1, verse 2, and this is from the King James Version. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. So God is saying, I want you to prosper. Be in health and your soul will prosper. It's, it's right here, black and white. And I don't know why, I, well, I, I shouldn't say I don't know why people believe that. I, I know why because it, it's twisted. Satan has twisted the word and, and it's, we've been preached that our whole lives. I know I had. And then when you find out the truth, you, you see that we've been deceived. But you don't have to be deceived anymore because now you know the truth that God wants you to be prosperous. Um, let's look at Psalms chapter one, verses one through three, and this is in the uh, Passion Translation. What delight comes to the one who follows God's ways? He won't walk in step with the wicked, nor share the sinner's way nor be found sitting in the scorner's seat. His pleasure and passion is remaining true to the word of I am, meditating day and night in true revelation of light. He will be standing firm like a flourishing tree planted by God's design, deeply rooted by the brooks of bliss, bearing fruit in every season of his life. He is never dry, never fainting, ever blessed, ever prosperous. So that is the depiction of someone who is following God, who's putting God first. He is ever blessed and ever prosperous. So that's kind of cut and dry to me that God wants you to prosper. So we know then that prosperity is for those who follow God's ways who puts God first, and then you start to get blessed, and then you're able to bless others. You're able to, to help those in need. So let's look at Matthew um, 6.33 in the King James Version, and this is a familiar one to us. 
But it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What things? Whatever things you need. A thing is a car. A thing is a roof over your head. A thing is air conditioning. Those are things. Seek ye first the kingdom. Seek God's kingdom first. And then all this stuff just, just will come in. And, and there's more to it. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about tithing. We're going to talk about offer, offerings. We'll do that um, in the coming weeks. But, but just know that when you seek God first... And you're not seeking the money. You're not seeking the provision. You're not trying to figure it out yourself. All the blessings will come and the provision will come to you. And you're not loving money. You're not seeking after money. That's part of so many people's misery is that they're seeking after provision. Or they're living without the provision that they need because they're not seeking God they're seeking the provision. And the devil loves that. That's his plan. And so many people are on board with his plan and they don't even realize it. Good Christian, God-fearing people are living way under what they need to be living like. They're, they're way under their, their level that God has set up for his people. And you're God's people. You should be living in prosperity. Okay. <laughs> Moving on, uh, let's take a look at Job chapter 36, 11, and this is in the NIV version. If they obey and serve him, they will spend the rest of their days in prosperity and their years in contentment. Not in heaven, people, on earth. They will spend their days in prosperity and their years in contentment here on earth. Not just in heaven, but here on earth. Okay, so let's take a look now at Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. And this is in the uh, NIV version. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave to you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. So does that mean you need to be perfect? No. It means you need to follow the commandments. And what are the commandments? Love God, love your neighbor. That sums up all the commandments then you repent of your sins and then you're forgiven. How do we do that? You can't be perfect. So how do we how do we get this blessing? How do we get this benefit to where it says that you'll be prosperous and successful through Jesus? And you get that through Jesus. Jesus makes you blameless. And if you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there's a little video at the end of this video, and I'll explain how to do that. But just know that this is God's will. That's what I'm trying to convey to you today, is that God wants you to prosper. It's in His Word. And actually, and this is, I need to look up the stats to give you the exact amount, but God talks about money and prosperity more than anything else in the Bible. It's the truth. He, he does. And it's because it, it just destroys so many lives. And it, it just, it, it's such an issue. I mean, we have to have it here on earth. You have to have money to eat. You have to have money to survive, to function. But it's more than that. You need money so that you can help others. You need money so that you can spread the gospel around the world. It takes money to do that. And people get all bent out of shape when pastors have airplanes, and I, that's just ridiculous. They're okay, you know, if, if the Playboy Hugh Hefner guy had an airplane, oh, he could go, you know, wherever, and that's fine. But heaven help us if a, a pastor has an airplane. Well, a pastor needs an airplane because if he's preaching in Africa, and then 
a few weeks later, he's over in Germany and he's doing, he can't do his job. It's, it's a way for him to get to where he needs to be. So people who are on board of the, oh, pastors don't need to have an airplane. They need to get off of that because that is a tool that preaches the gospel to all the world. And that's how they get there. And there's no delays or very few delays when you have your own plane versus being in an airport and, and waiting, you know, 12 hours and having flight delays and all these different things. So that's why preachers need airplanes, but that's, that's a whole nother issue. But anyway, through Jesus, we become blameless. And so through him, we're able to partake of this blessing of being prosperous, of being successful. So let's look then at Psalm chapter 37, verse 18 through 19, and this is in the NIV version. The days of the blameless are known to the Lord, and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. Basically what this is saying is that you're, if you're in Jesus, you're in Christ, you're a Christian, you have declared that Jesus is Lord over your life, you become blameless. So then you who are blameless, you get to partake in a blessing that doesn't matter what's going on in the rest of the world. If there's a, a famine going on, doesn't affect you. If there's a depression going on, doesn't affect you. You're not affected by that because you're seeking God first and he is providing for you. And, and he is providing for you because you're, you're looking at him for your provision. You're not trying to figure it out on your own. You're not seeking a way for provision. You're seeking God only and then he in turn provides the provision. And you have to do your part, but you do your part based on God's will and based on what he put you here to do, based on your skills, based on your talents, God has a, a, a plan and design for everybody, but his will for you is to be prosperous and to be successful. Here's a big kicker, <laughs> a kicker outer of the blessing, a kicker outer of God's promises is our mouth. So many people just negate it all, just negate it all with their mouth. And you can believe me or not believe me, but you get what you say. You get what you say. You always get what you say. Your life today is a product of what you said yesterday and the day before and the years before. If you say things like, oh, well, you know, I'll never get ahead. Oh, I have more, you know, month than bill, or I don't even know how it goes. You know what I mean. I have more month than money or something like that. If you always say that, guess what? That's going to happen. And it's not some big, ooh, you know, you get what you say, mystical thing from the secret, that's the secular version of that. No, it's in the Bible. You get what you say. Um, let's look at Isaiah chapter 55, 11, And it says, So shall my word that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So your word goes out and it prospers in the thing that you sent it to do. So if you speak a curse, if you say, we never have enough money, we don't have enough money for this, we don't have enough money for that, your word is doing what you sent it out to do. It comes back and it's like, oh, nope, you don't have enough. You don't have enough money for that. It's because you spoke it. And, and so many people make fun of me for this. And I don't care. <laughs> I really don't. But I want you to get it. I so want you to get it. And, and I've mentioned this before, but Henry Ford said it. And he's a pretty smart guy. <laughs> he invented the car. And he said, when you say either you, you can or you can't, either way you are correct. And what that means is if you say you can do it, you can do it. But if you say you can't, you can't. Because you get what you say. So God is trying to get prosperity to you, but you may be blocking the whole thing with your words. To 
take it or leave it. I'm just telling you like it is. I'm, I'm sharing the truth of God's word with you. So if you want to argue with me and you want to think, oh, well, that's just ridiculous, then keep having more month than money. That's on you, boo-boo. Okay, next, um, we need to be prosperous because God wants us to help others. He wants us to help the poor. Let's take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 15, uh, verse 4a, and it says, However, there should be no poor among you, for in the land the Lord your God is giving you to possess as your inheritance. He will richly bless you. So he's kind of fussing at us a little bit. You know, I'm going, hey, there should be no poor among you. What is wrong with you people? He's trying to bless us, and we're fighting him on it. We're like, no, we're good. We got this. We got all our months and not enough money. We're good. Next scripture is um, Psalm chapter 35, verse 27. And this is from the New King James Version. And I really like this verse because basically it says, us being prosperous gives God pleasure. It makes him happy. And think about this. If you have children and your children are doing well and they have good jobs and they have a, a nice family and they have nice cars and nice things, as a parent, doesn't that make you happy? Well, that's what this verse is saying. And um, again, it's Psalm chapter 35, verse 27 in the New King James. It says, let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause and let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified. Who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant? So, we want to make God happy. Be prosperous. <laughs> that makes him happy. So, next week, we're going to um, probably discuss all the different people in the Bible who were extremely prosperous. And... Again, people have the wrong idea. And, and it's not their fault that they have the wrong idea. And if you have the wrong idea, it's not your fault either because that's what we were taught. We were taught money is the root of all evil. Um, you should only want you know just, just enough to get by. You don't wanna be any trouble to God. You don't wanna ask him for too much. You know, he's busy up there in heaven walking on those gold streets. <laughs> no, he wants you to prosper. So hopefully you will get engaged in this lesson, in this study, and by the end of it, you will see that you can be prosperous too. So you be blessed. Thanks for being here, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. and I'm with Living a Word-Filled Life. And I wanted to talk to you briefly about salvation. And going to church doesn't guarantee you a spot in heaven. I don't care if you go every Sunday. Being a good person does not guarantee you a spot in heaven. What you need is salvation. Salvation was a gift given to us from the Father through Jesus. But as it, with any gift, you have to open the gift. You have to use the gift. And the way to use that gift is displayed in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. And it says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So that's what you need to do. So we're going to do that right now. If you're not saved, I'm going to say this, and you repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me and rose again. I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart and into my life. I repent of my sins. 
I receive your forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's all you need to do.